Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Talks with Vox. Today is December 15th, and yeah, it's December 15th. School's finally, I'm talking really fast. School's really over. School's finally over. No, not school, but the fall semester is over. I had my last class on Wednesday, so we're home free. It feels very weird to have a month and a half of nothing to do besides work and, you know, my projects like podcasts and YouTube, but I'm excited. Christmas is in 10 days. All my gifts are already bought, you know, wrapping them. Wrapping gifts is tough. Especially for someone who hasn't really wrapped gifts before. I'm, a, I'm usually a bag and tissue paper kind of guy, but, you know, I, I tried my best, and I think I did a pretty good job. I think I used a little bit more paper than I really should have. Jeez, should have. But I think they look really good. And I think wrapping gifts is just, you know, it shows you put the effort into it, and I think it's more fun to open and see someone open a wrapped gift because, you know, they, you know, like find the tape, tear it apart. Because with a, with a bag, with paper, you just kind of, you know, take out the paper and just grab it, and you kind of see it. But, like... With a wrapped gift, you can like wrap it up, put it in a box, and then you know that that double layer of opening it. I think it's just ten times more more fun. I certainly have more fun opening a gift that's wrapped because you know, you ball you ball it up, you get the trash bag full of wrapping paper. My dad, you know, he's a, he's a big uh, big proprietor of that tactic. You know, the big trash bag full of wrapping paper. But I, I don't know, I really enjoy doing that. So all those are wrapped. They're under my new coat rack in my bedroom, which you know I built that myself. God damn it, I built it myself Wednesday, I think. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Build a coat rack from for myself because uh, I asked it. I initially asked it for Christmas from my parents or from Santa Claus. Pardon me. And my mom was like, "That's kind of a lame gift, so I'm not gonna buy you one on Amazon." I was like, "All right, sweet." So I built that. That's in my room and has sweatshirts, hats, scarves, everything. Cause like uh, I I'm, I have OCD and I have a real issue with like wearing a jacket, like a sweatshirt or a fleece or like just kind of like an overcoat, and then washing it after one wear. And this coat rack is kind of like a good stop block for me for my OCD because I can just wear it, hang it up, and then wear it again. You know, save water because I'm just like, like I I I I I'll wear a sweatshirt and then I'll just wear it like for like six hours or something and then throw it like put it in the hamper. I'm like, you know, I, I probably could have worn that two two additional days, two additional six hour bursts. So now you know the sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now, before I shower tonight, before you know once I go home, I'll just take it off, hang it up, and then wear it again. And it's awesome. You know, I think that. As someone who's had OCD and like has known that I've had OCD for about like two and a half years now, but I've been experiencing these, you know, I had a really, I had a really big issue with dry hands. I still get dry hands, but not as bad because I, I kind of had like a fear and just kind of an inability to wear moisturizer or lotion on my hands. So my hands in the wintertime would get especially dry because I was overwashing them and then not moisturizing them. So, you know, the dry skin would just get taken over by the winter. I had these dry, red, cracked hands, but now I lotion uh, after each shower. I, I still shower twice a day which is still, you know, not that good. But, like, I used to, like, wash my hair twice a day, but then I was like, you know, my hairstylist was like, yeah, your hair's getting really dry. So now I only, I still shower twice a day, but I only wash it, like, twice a week. So that was a big step for me. Um, I still I still wash my hands and hand sanitize a lot. Like, if I shake somebody's hand, I usually have to hand sanitize it. Or, like, if I touch something, like, I, what I'll do is, like, I'll grab door handles with, um, like, a, my hand in my sleeve or like I'll kick open doors if I have to instead of like putting my hand to the handle. Like I have a lot of like a lot of avoidance styles toward with my OCD where it's like I have to do this so to not like freak myself out and have to wash my hands again. And I like especially like really ramped up over COVID because <clears throat> you know with the whole fear of you know it being an airborne illness and something that could like spread if you touch something or got this on something. I like, especially like it was like my hands are probably the worst over COVID. Like just red, cracked, and my face was really bad too because I wasn't moisturizing my face. Like I had red spots around my eyes, uh, on the outside of my lips. Uh, where else was it? Somewhere else. So I had to like put like Aquaphor on my face overnight, and like in the school, I just looked like a wreck. But now I'm a lot better. I've learned a lot of you know coping mechanisms. You know, like I said, like the coat rack is helping me. You know, not wash everything every time I wear it. Uh, you know, I've I've gotten over my fear of lotion. Like now I'm doing like a half dollar sized amount of lotion, twice a day, just like like dolloping it on rubbing all over my body like it feels good like I like feeling moisturized and like I'm able to like sense that you know my hands are dry I'm just like all right lotion lotion you gotta lotion up and I have like this nice hypoallergenic scentless lotion that I really love so that's been really dope to use um but yeah like I really I, I, I it's very nice to have these coping mechanisms and therapy really helped with that I haven't I, I need to start going to therapy again like I had my, my therapist and she really helped me. Like one of the things that I struggled with the most with my OCD was intrusive thoughts. And it's not those intrusive thoughts that, you know, people on TikTok, they claim to have where it's like, um, like, oh my God, intrusive thought. What if I veered off the road while I was driving? That's not really an intrusive thought. That's more of just like, 
you're being a human and you're like kind of having this like spontaneous it's like spontaneous goofball I don't even know like my intrusive thoughts are more just like like I'd freak myself out like I'd, I'd just be at home and I'd be like oh well my mom hasn't gotten home yet what if she got like she got in a car accident or it's like oh like when I had my when I was dating this one girl if she like went, wouldn't text for a while like I didn't know where she was I'd be like oh what if she's like dead what if she's like you know it's, it's stuff like that where it like freak me out and like I, I could dive way more in deep in that but that's not what this podcast is about you know I don't want to get super dark or anything but what really helped me with my intrusive thoughts was playing music which I do employ that a lot. You know, I always have an AirPod and earbud and I always have a lot of things playing. Like I'll be playing video games. I'll have the video game, music, and I have something on my laptop. Like I have to have something distracting me. Like if I'm in the silence, that's when the thoughts really start to go. But like they've, I've really improved over time. You know, I've gotten more positive. So my intrusive thoughts are less, they're few and far between, but you know, they, they still happen. But what happens is like, I'll have like a really bad thought and I'll do, I'll do this. I'll do a knock on wood. It doesn't have to be on wood. Like I'll be driving and have like a really bad thought. And I'll just tap on my wheel twice. Or, you know, I'll just like tap, so I'll just mimic that motion of tapping twice. And then that kind of helps clear my head, be like, you're, you're being ridiculous right now. Like, you know, they're not getting in a car accident. They're not like, you know, nothing bad is happening. Like, you have no reason to freak out. And that's really helped. And that was something that I kind of developed on my own. Like, the one that I talked, the one that I got from my therapist was listening to music. Like, that was one I kind of workshopped with her and that helped. But one that I, you know, tapping twice, like that's something that I came up with myself because, you know, knock on wood, that, that classic saying, it's like, you know, knock on wood and, you know, stuff like that. And like, initially it would be like, I'd have to search for wood, like use paper, but now I'm just like, just that, that motion just kind of calms me. And something else that I found that I do a lot is when I get like an intrusive thought, I'll jerk my head to the left or right. So as to like shake that thought out of my head. So I get like an, I'll get like a negative intrusive thought. And I'll just like jerk my head to the left. And it's like a, like a quick snap. Like it's almost like a tick. Like I have like Tourette's or something, but I don't. I just have OCD and anxiety. But that also helps. It's, it's like literally me like shaking the head out of my, you know, brain. Like I'll just be walking. And I don't really think anybody's really noticed it. Like I, I like the only people that really know is like the people that I've told. I'm just like, hey, you know, this is like kind of like a coping mechanism I have is I'll just like jerk my head. And I'm glad that nobody's really pointed it out because it is very quick and it kind of just looks like I'm kind of me, you know, like dodging a fly or something, but it really helps. Like not like tapping on wood or tapping on anything and jerking my head. Like that really helps. And like if you have OCD or anxiety, like I think it's best to, you know, find something that kind of suits to you and is, is very simple to replicate and just do no matter the situation, just tapping on wood. Like I'll be in my bed and I'll just tap the wall behind me or I'll just like tap my leg twice. And like a weird thing with my OCD is like if I accidentally tap three times, I have to tap three more times because like it has to be twice because if I tap twice, that's clearing the thought. But if I tap three times, that's canceling out that first tap. So I have to tap one more to do a full cancel and then twice more to, to redo the tap, if that makes sense. So like two taps, it's clear. But three taps accidentally, that's that's two and then half of a of a restart. So I have to complete the restart and then do two more taps if that makes sense like I'm just kind of talking ramble right now but it makes sense because it's just becomes so ingrained in my brain where it's like oh tap twice get it out oh I tap three times accidentally let's tap three more times to reset it and start a new tap that clears my head and that's really worked like I've I've been really really good at my anxiety and my OCD over the last like year and a half where I've had these kind of ways of dealing with it and it helps like like I, I am a big advocate for therapy, but I haven't I haven't talked to a therapist in eight or nine months just because I've sort of found a way for me to self like to calm myself down. And I do want to, you know, get in contact with a therapist, but like the one that I had, she's retiring soon. And I've been journaling a lot recently. That that really helps to kind of like like get my days down and just kind of how I feel. And like it's not even like like sometimes I won't even go into like stuff because I just didn't really have like a bad day or anything. Like I'll just kind of lay out what happened that day? Just because I like having a log of my days. Like I started journaling <sighs> mid to late September. September. And I still have like a few more months left in the journal, so I'm very excited to like go through that and just like see my days dialed out. Like I think like I've always wanted like a notebook. Like I think one of my favorite like things is like a really well documented and like well written out notebook. And like I have, I have really bad handwriting, but like I think it'll just look nice to just have this full journal of just my days for the last like six months. Like I'm very excited for when that becomes a reality and I can like look through it and be like oh this is how I was feeling you know mid-October like that's that, that's just really helped me and where was what was I even talking about that got me here intrusive thoughts OCD oh the coat rack presents yeah presents so Christmas is coming up 10 more days which is kind of crazy like I feel like I can remember the, the day very vividly of last year's Christmas but it's like a, it's almost 2024 which is crazy I turned 20 I turned 20 in like six months which is kind of ridiculous but I think that this is a, this is a really good year. This is one of the best years in recent memory, I think, for me. 
just in terms of like like I like it wasn't you know all perfect like I had like a bit of a rough patch like not really a rough patch but just kind of like a, a a lull those first few months in January February March but these last few months have been awesome like I, I feel like I'm really in a good headspace I'm doing stuff that I really like you know YouTube and podcasting like I'm really starting to really you know get my feet wet in terms of you know creating media and production you know I had my short film on YouTube my girl and my best friend that I wrote directed and edited that was incredibly rewarding I talked about it last episode that's one of the like my favorite things I've ever created I'm extremely proud of it and I and I hope you know whoever's listening to this I hope you know you've, you've checked it out on my YouTube but that was incredibly rewarding YouTube's been fun I, I posted my first non sports video on Monday and that, and that got pretty good reception you know I, I went through my vinyl collection and it was easy you know I just grabbed my vinyls talked about them and then that was it no cuts no editing just record and post I might do CDs next. I might start doing manga. You know, I, it, it, just the simple stuff that I can do around the house, which is talking about things that are just, you know, tangible. You know, it doesn't have to be about sports. You know, it's my, it's Wave a Docker. It's not Wave a Docker sports. It's not David Talk Sports. It's Wave a Docker. And that's what, you know, Talks with Walks is the same thing where it's like, I'm not, I'm not at the point where I want to pigeonhole myself into doing stuff. I kind of just want to, you know, talk about stuff until I want to talk about, you know, sports. And I have, like, I, I find, you know, because I've talked about this before, but, like, I'm not really doing anything nuanced right now with my content. Like, you could probably find similar stuff to what I'm doing all around the Internet. Not probably. You definitely can. I'm just talking about my life and occasionally talking about the sports teams that I like. Like, so many people are doing that. But, you know, I'll find the nuance eventually. I'll, I'll, I'll find the rut that I can, you know, succeed in where it's like, oh, this guy's doing something that, like, I don't really see a lot on the Internet. And I'm excited for when I reach that point. But right now, I just kind of, like, I just have to talk about random stuff. And not random stuff, but just stuff that pertains to me and, and I enjoy talking about. Because I don't have a large audience yet. And I don't have anybody, you know, breathing down my neck saying, like, hey, why didn't you talk about this? Or, hey, you should talk about this, you know. I, I, I want to, and this is, you know, I'm beating a dead horse with this saying now. But, you know, I, you, you got to make stuff for you before you make stuff for other people. And that sounds selfish, but that, that, that's just how media has to be in content creation. Like, you're going to get nowhere if you're trying to cater your content to other people. you got to cater it to yourself. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun this year. Looking forward to see what 2024 holds. I'm going to graduate in 2024, which is very exciting. December. I have six more classes left. Very, very exciting. Um, but, yeah, it's been a good year. I'm talking really fast. I had a coffee before this. I don't really have caffeine that much. So I feel like I'm, my, my mind's running like a mile a minute. Like, before I left here, I was playing Pokemon, the new DLC. And, like, I, like, put my water cup down. And, like, before I left, I was trying to look for it. And I just couldn't find it. And I thought that I had, like, disappeared in, like, a new dimension or something. Like, I was I was, I was tweaking. But I, I got fooled like an animal because it was a clear cup and it was just under my my desk and I was like oh I feel stupid but but yeah it's been a good year uh I mean I guess let's talk Pokemon DLC while we're here uh the new Pokemon DLC came out Indigo Disc after Teal Mask that came out in October Teal Mask was okay I love Pokemon Scarlet it's not you know the best looking game or best performing game but I really enjoyed it I like the direction that they're kind of going with these main series games like they, they it's, not, it's not a fully polished game but like the idea of just you know here's all the I mean what they they framed it as a do it in whatever your order you want, but if you pl if you battle the ice gym first, it's gonna be level forty. It's like it's not gonna scale down to your levels, which I think is kind of stupid. I think they could have done a better job with that, where it's like you literally could go in whatever direction. Like instead of the ice gym leader having a Satitan, she could have had a Satoddle or something. Like that would have been cool if like they adapted the levels and like the evolutions of their Pokemon to the levels of your team. But you know, I'm just kind of nitpicking at this at this point. But I'm, I'm hoping that that's what they end up doing in Generation 10 for that first camera. It's like, you can literally do anything you want in any order. Because, like, cause Legends Arceus was their first game where it was essentially open world, but there were, like, little mini-worlds you could go to. Like, you couldn't go from the Crips and Mirelands to Coastal, Coastlands, whatever the hell it was called. Like, you had to, like, go back to the pub and then go out to it. But with Scarlet and Valley, you could travel all around Paldea and do it in whatever order, but the levels don't scale down. Like, I think they could definitely find a way to be like, oh, if you, you like... There are eight gems, and you can literally go, you can go six, seven, four, five, eight, two, one. Like, you could do that, and the levels will scale correctly. Like, I think that'd be a really interesting thing for them to do. But I don't know, you know, I'm not a video game designer, so I don't know the code surrounding that. But, um, yeah, I really enjoy Scarlet and Violet. I just played Scarlet, but I really enjoyed it. I <clears throat> There hasn't been a Pokemon game that I've overtly disliked. Um, I'm just a huge Pokemon fan. I've been a fan for as long as I can remember. And, like, I'm kind of, like, I, I wouldn't say, like, I'm, a, like, a glazer and, a, like, an apologist, but it's just, like, I don't know. I'm not a very picky person. And, like, they've just made good games. Like, my favorites, like, I don't think they'll ever reach the peaks of Platinum, Black and White, Black and White 2. Like, that, what was that, like, four or five-year stretch of Pokemon games was peak. 
Like they they could do no wrong with those games. Like Platinum's my favorite game of all time. Black and white and black and white two are like right up there. Like I think Platinum is my favorite just because the Pokemon variety is there. Sinnoh is my favorite region. Torterra is just the best thing ever, and just the music. Black and white's amazing, and it's just like that. It's just they they nailed it, and like that art style is incredible. Like I would love for them to go back to that style, but I know they never will because like three D is just. There's people that are just such graphic pansies, and they're like, no, it, it looks terrible. Like, it has to be, like, 3D. But it's like, I don't care. Like, I want a good story and a well-running game. And if, and if, if a well-running game requires it to go back to the DS-style graphics, then, then do it. I don't know why they haven't put all the DS games on the Switch yet. I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. But, you know, Pokemon Company has made some very questionable decisions. And, you know, I don't know. I'm not a marketing executive, so I, I feel like there's got to be some financial issues there. But, like, I don't want to have to spend $120 to play a game that came out in 2012. Just put it on the eShop. Yeah, Scarlet and Violet was cool. Uh, the Pokemon were really cool. Like, I liked, I'd probably say, like, 70% of them. Like, the rest I kind of just didn't really care about. And the Teal Mask DLC was okay. Like, it just ran poorly. The story was kind of mid. But the new, uh, like, Applin's Evolution Diplin was dope. I mean, like, I enjoyed the Carmen and whatever the hell her brother's name is. Like, I enjoyed that story. Like, I'm excited to see what her brother, like, his team... In Indigo Disc is because like I've played into the Indigo Disc and I've played like an hour or two of it, but I've only been catching the Pokemon. Like I haven't really done much of the story stuff. I'm just kind of like completing stuff. And like I like was considering just running my whole level 100 team, but I'm just like I don't know. I kind of want to enjoy it and not just like sweep through everything. So like my team right now is my level 100 Spide Ops that I use for false swiping. Like I'm I'm using that to catch everything, and I'm going through all like the Terra raids because I need to get experience candies because like, the team that I have collected. They are not leveled properly, like they're like mid sixties. I'm gonna get them to like mid seventies. But I'm gonna use my Diplin because I heard that it gets an evolution, like Hydraplin or something. I'm like fucking excited for that. That's gonna be awesome. I'm using Diplin, Flygon, Flygon named Goggles. My Diplin's named Mel. Uh, I'm using a two cannon named Beakers. I'm using a lantern named Job. What else am I using? Oh shoot. Wait, Diplin, Flygon, Lantern. Two cannon. Ah, oh, shit. What's the fifth one? Dip- Regardless, uh, I'll probably remember it eventually. Uh, oh, a meow stick. A meow stick named Mau Mau. But yeah, like I'm gonna level those like, those guys at the mid 70s because like I want to be I want to make it fair battles and exciting battles because like I I played through Teal Mask majority with my level 100 team. It just wasn't that fun because I was just like housing them with my my like torch song throat spray Skeledurge and like my bullet punch technician Sizzle. Like I just I. I, I because, like, it was easier for me just because I, I, I wasn't really interested in the story. Like, I kind of just wanted to, you know, get all the new Pokemon. But I'm like, this one is, like, Indigo Disc, I was I was initially just already more excited for it than Teal Mask. It's like, you know what, I'm just going to make it easier on me and just kind of sweep through it. But now with Indigo Disc, you know, I want to have an actual team that's leveled at the rate that the rest of the teams are. But apparently, like, most of the battles, like, they have, like, IV trained, like, competitive teams. So if I get swept or, like, I get, you know, I black out against them, I might just be like, all right, I'm using level 100 because, like, I'm not dealing with this BS. And I wish there was a way for, like, I mean, this is like, I'm probably just asking too much, but, like, it'd be cool if it's, like, you have a level, a level 100 team, you could be, like, all right, for this battle, I'm going to scale down to what the trainer is, just for the sake of, you know, like, I want to use these Pokemon, but, like, they're not leveled properly to where it's going to be fair. But, you know, that's asking too much. I'm, I'm not really, you know, I'm not going to be too picky. But Indigo Disc, I'm excited for it. You know, the starter's is going to be back. I'm definitely going to catch a Tur- uh, Turtwig. Definitely going to catch a Tur- I'm probably going to catch all of them, but, like, initially I'm going to do Tepig, Turtwig. Probably Squirtle first because you know those are probably my top three favorite starters. And later in the episode, I'm gonna do that like Pokemon picker, what's like your favorite from each region and like your favorite of each type or whatever. I'm gonna do that because I haven't done that in a while. You know, I might want to see if my picks change, but yeah. Indigo Disc, pretty fun so far. Um, I really hope like what the like it's like the Blueberry Academy apparently is like in Unova and like the battle theme is like the remix Unova battle theme. So I hope that means that they're doing like a a Unova based game soon, like maybe like 2025. But I'm really hoping, like, pray to God, that it is a, it is, it's a Legends game. Like, Legends Victini, or, like, Legends, I don't know, Qrem. Like, I want them to do, like, a Wild West Pokemon game. Like, oh, my God, can you imagine that? Can you imagine a Wild West Pokemon game? Because <laughs> Legend Arceus was, like, the most innovative thing that they've done in a long-ass time. Like, that game was incredible. Like, getting to see how Spear Pillar became cracked as it did, getting to see Primal Dialga and Palkia, getting to see, like, all, like, the... You know, Volo being Cynthia and, uh, no, it was just Cynthia's ancestor. The other guy was, um, Volkner. But, like, getting to see all the, all the, like, the old characters and, like, their ancestors is just so fun. And, like, all, like, the Hasu, like, it was, it was an amazing game. Probably my favorite Pokemon game since, like, probably Black 2, White 2. 
Like I had fun, so much fun playing that game, and I hope that they can continue that series and don't just do like chibi Ilka black and white remakes after how Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl just kind of were just meh. Like that, like they, those games are not like I played both of them. I beat Cynthia in Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond. Like I played through both of them. I really enjoyed them because I love Sinnoh, but like it wasn't what I wanted. Like I mean, I cried when it was announced, but it wasn't what I wanted. Like everyone wanted like you know Mega Ruby level of remake where it's like this game actually looks beautiful. And, you know, there's some level of innovation to it. Like, you get to see New Mallville. You get to see all the Megas. Like, it didn't really do anything. It was just like, here's Sinnoh again, but 3D. And, like, not even 3D. Like, it didn't, like, it's still that those those dumbass chibi sprites. Like, it kind of pissed me off. And the music was cool. The battle scenes were cool. But everything else was just like, this is just Diamond and Pearl again. Like, I'll just play Platinum if I want to play this game again. But, yeah, I hope that I don't do a remake. I hope that I do, like, a Legends game. I'm so capped up right now. I do not drink coffee a lot, and I just feel, like, really jumpy right now. But... Yeah, Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, more video game talk, I guess. Uh, I've been playing a lot of the new Fortnite chapter, Chapter 5, Season 1. OG Fortnite was cool, but as someone who plays Fortnite very frequently and, like, didn't stop playing when they when they left Chapter 1, like, I hasn't really stopped playing since I started. Like, I've been playing since December 2017. Like, OG Fortnite was cool, and I'm just like, I want a new map. Like, I know people are just, like, clamoring for it. It's like, just make OG map permanent. Like, make the OG season. Like, no. Like, I don't know. Like, I like Shifty Shafts, but, like, I want to see a new location. I think they nailed it so far with this new chapter. Like, I haven't really been pissed off that much. Like, the one thing the only thing I've really gotten mad about is, like, I, I play ranked, and, like, I'm, like, Diamond 1 right now, and, like, it, people keep dropping my place, and it's pissing me off. Like, I'm going, like, Seaside Villa, which is, like, bottom left of the map, and I'm just like, how, like, you, no, I put you on. Like, why, stop landing here. Like, you're, 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 you're ruining my placement points. Like, I want to get one kill and place fifth every game, but you're, you're stopping that and making that hard for me. But it's been dope. The guns are fun. The map is really, really good. The train, I've, I've been I've been wanting a train in Fortnite for so long because, like, the way, like, the train in Warzone super dope. Like, I love landing on that train. And, like, I w- like the one thing I wish that they had, like, I really like Mega City. Like, I would rotate in the Mega City from Naughty Nets free, very frequently when I played uh, last chapter. Like, I miss the high tower because I'm someone that really enjoys sniping. And just having the sniper and the big tower is just a recipe for, for success because I really like landing and, like, going to the big city in Warzone. And sniping off of those towers, like that was dope. Like I wish this new map had like a big city with big towers, because like Tilted is cool, but those towers aren't tall enough where it's like I'm all the way up here. But the Mega City towers were super high, like they were straight up skyscrapers, and it was just fun to snipe off of them. So that, that's like my one wish for, uh, throughout this chapter, is that they add a city that's massive and has big skyscrapers. But I've really enjoyed it so far. I think the weapon attachments are dope. The medallions are cool. Like getting to see like who has the medallion on the map is really useful, but it's also kind of terrifying. Cause like I'll just be like chilling, and like since I land Seaside Villa, it's right by um, Snooty Steps or whatever. So like that Peter Griffin medallion is always like rotating in to um, whatever the hell that farmland area is. So that's very intimidating. So like when I actually do escape Seaside Villa alive, unless like some sweat kills me, there's always that medallion guy like creeping in from the left. That's freaking me out. Like this new chapter's been pretty cool. Uh, Lego Fortnite. I wanted to talk about this like the last episode, but I forgot. Uh, it's actually it's all right. Like, I haven't gotten used to it yet. Like, as someone who's been playing Minecraft for a long time, like, whenever I boot up a new Minecraft world, like, I know the formula of how to, like, succeed in that. Like, I know when I get in, break a tree, make a crafting table, make a pickaxe, you know, get some pigs, get some wheat, like, find a village. With LEGO Fortnite, I haven't really developed that formula yet. And I'll admit it is easier, I think, in terms of building stuff because as opposed to, like, it's based on your own creativity, you just have that these these pre-built houses you can do. And, like, you can build your own stuff with the pieces, but it's not, I don't really want to do that. Like, I just want to build the houses. And, like, that's been cool. Like, it's cool that you can just, like, build a log cabin. And, like, here's the directions. But it it is a little janky, though, because they just give you it step by step. So you have to, like, build the first step and then, like, exit out, press circle again or whatever, like, the build button again, and then, like, start the next step instead of it just being, like, a step-by-step, like, sequential thing. You have to be like, all right, I'm going to build these three things. Click circle again. Build these three things. And you have to, like, drag it over, like, manually. Like, I wish there was just, like, an auto-build. And it's just like, here, take all the resources that you need and build it. But, I mean, I understand, like, you know, it's the game is building. You know, that's Fortnite's whole thing. So, of course, they're going to do, you know, a manual building thing in the LEGO Fortnite. But it's been fun. I had a world by myself for a while, but I deleted it because I was like, this isn't really that fun. I have a world with my friends now, and it's been fun playing on that. I'm probably going to start a world with my brothers, too. Like, it, it's a thousand times more fun with friends. And, I mean, that's fair for most games. Like, Minecraft is more fun with friends. It's just cool just to, you know, have your own little town with your buddies. Like, I, I love doing that. But it's been fun. I need to play more of it. And, like, I wasn't really excited for the game mode when it was announced. I was more so excited for the sets, and they've yet to announce any sets. So that's kind of making me a little sad because I was like, you know what? I want sets. I want, you know, I want to build a Lego tomato head. I want to build, like, 
pizza pit. I want to build the Durberg. I want to build Tilt the Towers. Like, I want a set that I can display because I love Lego. And, like, they haven't announced any sets yet. So I'm hoping that they do that, I don't know, next week for Christmas or something. Like, I don't know. Like, New Year, some sets coming out. Like, I really hope that that's the case. But I don't know. I mean, I, I'd be stunned if they don't do any sets. I think they'd be very surprising. But I don't know. Who knows? It's been a lot of fun. Lego Fortnite's cool. Uh, it's cool that it's a permanent game mode, too. It's going to get frequent updates. So it's really shitting on Minecraft now because Minecraft, like, I love Minecraft, but Minecraft's player base relies on, you know, it's that whole joke. Like, everybody knows that this is real. Like, that, you know, you get that random three-month phase of, like, I just want to play Minecraft all day. And I had that phase over the summer with my buddies. But now I'm just like, eh, I don't really care. Like, I don't really want to play it right now. But I think Lego Fortnite, with its, I think it's very sustainable. And you can see a lot of people playing that game for a long time because of the frequent updates because Minecraft is just like every eight months here's a shitty mob that you can build this one thing with and, have, and like you can only vote one in and the rest are, get deleted and the fact that they did the glow squid and not the, the moo bloom was ridiculous fuck you dream you're pissing me off that bullshit dude oh get the glow squid like no one wants glowy ink sacks we wanted a cool dandelion cow my god dream is the worst dude he's actually I don't want to get into it but he's the worst and he ruined everything and he's why Minecraft is terrible now Lego Fortnite clears. I want to set Lego Fortnite, Lego Fortnite, Lego Fortnite, Lego Fortnite, Lego Fortnite. What was I going to talk about? I was thinking about something. Oh, what was I thinking about? Oh, yeah, uh, the Ninja Turtles came out in Fortnite. It's a little frustrating. Like, th th I mean, this is how Fortnite works. It's, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a cash cow game. And, like, they're going to try to maximize their profit no matter what because it's a free game. And, like, their money comes from the cosmetics. But the fact that the Ninja Turtles were like, a buy-separately thing instead of making it a one ninja with, like, different styles is kind of weird. Like, I mean, I, I guess if you think about it, like, what would the one style, like, what would the base style be? I mean, it'd probably be, like, Leonardo. You could buy, like, it should just be Ninja Turtles and you could change the style. And, and that's the same thing with the the the, 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 the mogul, the, the skiing skins. All the skiing skins are separate for each country. But then they release the soccer skins and you can choose each country. Like, I don't know. It's just... The, the Fortnite's very selective with what has selectable styles and what doesn't. It's a little frustrating. Like, I don't want to, if someone wants all four, four Ninja Turtles, they have to spend, like, what is it, like, 60 bucks or something? It's ridiculous. I don't know. I'm not buying them. I might buy one of the pickaxes, though. The pickaxes look pretty cool. But, like, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. But, yeah, that's my that's my video game talk. I guess we'll get into some sports talk now, maybe. What, is there anything else I want to talk video game-wise? I talk Fortnite, enjoy Chapter 5, talk Pokemon DLC. Uh... Ba 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 ba. Now I guess we can talk sports. Uh, we'll talk Kings first. Let's see. Kings won last night against the Thunder. Very close game. My boy De'Aaron Fox got 40 points, which was freaking awesome. And like the rest were pretty bad. Like there were a lot of calls. Like I thought that Chet Holmgren, like I thought he got all of, all, all arm there, but I guess not. Yeah, my boy De'Aaron dropped 40 points. Shea Gilders Alexander dropped 43 points. And like the the NBA dropped. It's like what's well, hold on. NBA MVP ladder. Kia Race MVP ladder. This is updated like frequently. Here we go. Kia MVP ladder. So, you know, this is going to come back to the Kings eventually, but I, I just want to talk basketball. So, this is today. This is the Kia MVP ladder. So, number one, Joel Embiid. I totally understand it. His numbers are ridiculous. He's averaging like almost 34 points, almost 12 rebounds, six assists as a center. Um,. He's doing amazing things, and, you know, the Sixers are playing good basketball. Number two, Nikola Jokic. He's doing Jokic things, 27, 13, and 10. Like, he's just ridiculous. He's like a he's a walking triple-double at this point, and it's 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 amazing what he's doing. Giannis Antetokounmpo, 32, 10, 5. He just dropped 64 points a few days ago. He's playing like MVP. You know, he's a two-time MVP, one of the best players in the league. Next up, Shagulis Alexander. Number four, you know, uh, Thunder's like what, like second or third in the West? 31, 6, and f 6. He's playing really good basketball. He's one of the most efficient shooters in the league. Uh, and he, like, he leads the league in steals as a guard. Like, he's, he's doing great things. I, I love Shea a lot. Number five, Luka Doncic. Averaging 32, 8, and 9. He's had a kid, and he's playing, he's playing like a god. I love Luka. He was my preseason MVP pick, and I think, honestly, at this rate, he may end up winning the MVP. And then the next five, Jason Tatum, Tyrus Halliburton, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, and LeBron James. Where the hell? Where the hell? is De'Aaron Fox. I, mean, I can see, and five more listed alphabetically, is Kevin Durant, De'Aaron Fox, Kawhi Leonard, DeMontis Sabonis, Carlton Towns, and that's, that's like, you know, the, the, the 11 through 15 in no order. But De'Aaron Fox is doing insane things right now. He is the best player on one of the best teams in the West. He's averaging 30 points, playing really good defense. He's one of the best two-way guards in the league right now. I'm very biased. He's averaging 30, 
34 and 6, shooting 48% from the field. He's improved to three point percentage. He's shooting almost 39% from three. His free throws have always been a struggle, but you know, he's doing he's he, he, his whistle. He doesn't have a super superstar whistle yet, which I think is kind of ridiculous. Third team, third team all, all NBA last year. He's doing amazing things. He just scored 41 points. You know, he's. I just don't understand how you can say that he is more deserving of the MVP than say. This is going back to the Tyrese Halliburton, Darren Fox debate, but I don't think this may sound crazy. It actually might be actually a little bit, uh, maybe incredibly biased and kind of crazy. I don't think that Tyrese Halliburton contributes to the Pacers winning as much as De'Aaron Fox contributes to the Sacramento Kings winning. Because when De'Aaron Fox went down for those five games with a sprained ankle, the Kings lost like four or five games. He is, he's essentially, I mean, now that we have Domas, like he's not really like he he can be the secondary ball handler. Like that's like one of the reasons that we got Domas bonus is that he can be a game manager while De'Aaron, you know, can kind of sit around and you know just be a spark plug but i don't know i just don't think that you can really and like i'm not saying that darren fox should be top five right now over joel Jokic, Giannis, shea and luca because these guys are all doing ridiculous things and they're putting up much more impressive counting stats than De'Aaron. but i just think that De'Aaron should be top 10 i think he should be above devin booker i think he should be above lebron james i think that you i can comfortably say that De'Aaron fox should be at least nine or ten in mvp voting right now just because of how the kings play without him and how he contributes to both sides of the ball better than a lot of these other guys. D Book is not a very good defender. A D, he's he should be up here. He's one of the best defenders in the league. Tyrus Halliburton, he's one of the best playmakers, probably the best playmaker in the league, him and Jokic. But he is not a very good two way player. Like he's not a very good defender. The Pacers have one of the worst defenses in the league. They're a very offensive powered uh team. But the, the the Kings, you know, Mike Brown with their coach, he's a very defensive minded coach. And he has kind of instilled that these styles of you know, Keegan Murray's improved on defense this year. Keon Ellis is one of the best 3 and D guys. Not one of the best 3 and D. He's become a really good 3 and D guy. You know, like I said, Keegan Murray's improved his defense. De'Aaron Fox, one of the best two-way guards in the league. Davion Mitchell, while he's had his offensive struggles this year, he's still one of the best, you know, uh, perimeter defenders, like young perimeter defenders. I just think what De'Aaron Fox is contributing to this team is more valuable, most valuable player. This is, a, this is an argument that kind of annoys me about, you know, because – a lot of MVP voting in like every sport comes down to like counting stats and it's like you're not really the most valuable like I can like I don't know like it's the whole argument like I think you could say this in baseball where it's like and I'm not saying that Shohei Otani had a bad season or like he no no human could look at what he did and say he's but it's like the the Angels did not make the playoffs and while Otani you know did have his incredible stats I don't think you I don't think non-playoff teams should have an MVP. I don't think you should win MVP if your team didn't make the playoffs because what value are you really supplying if you can't make your team? Like, it's, I don't know, that may sound kind of like a selfish and kind of like a ridiculous argument, but it's like, if if your team isn't in the playoffs, then how valuable really are you? Like, sure, like, if you weren't, if the Angels, if the Angels don't have Shohei Otani, they'd probably be you know, the worst team in the American League, but they still had them and they didn't even make the playoffs. Like, I think the, the most valuable player should go to a team that makes the playoffs, and that, that that should be like the only, and then it should be based on value, not counting stats. It's not most best player. That was terrible. That, that, but like, that, you know what I'm saying? It's like it doesn't really make sense for the like, counting stats to it, it, for it to boil down the counting stats. And like I know that this will never change in the NFL, but like the fact that the MVP is a QB award, and, and, and like it makes sense. But it's just like I mean, they are the most valuable player on the field. But it's like. The fact that Brock, I was talking about this yesterday. I am a, I am an open Brock Purdy hater. You know, he torched my Eagles a few weeks, few weeks ago, and I'm just tired of the whole narrative that they would have beat us if Brock Purdy was healthy because he wasn't healthy and they didn't beat us and we made the Super Bowl. Like who who cares? But how valuable? Like it's just like Christian McCaffrey provides more value to that team than Brock Purdy. Like what Christian McCaffrey is able to do with the ball in his hands and the open space that he has given after receiving the ball from Brock Purdy is more valuable than Brock Purdy reading the field and passing it to him. Like, and you know, this is, I should probably get back to the NBA talk, but it's just like the most valuable player is just such like a diluted award. It's just, it just becomes down to counting stats. Like who had the best season? That's not, is that, that's not really the most valuable season. Like that's why like 2018 LeBron James should have won MVP because that ca- that Cavaliers team had no right being in the playoffs. Like with like Jeff Green, K-Love, Jordan Clarkson, like those were like his th- his best players, and then you have LeBron doing what he did in 2018. Like, that's valuable. 
And like, sure, like the the James Harden averaged near triple double. The Rockets won sixty games. Like he was valuable to that team. But in terms of like the most valuable player, it should be based on a team that makes the playoffs. And what would that team look like without that player on their team? Like Shohei Otani won MVP, and the Angels would be much worse if they didn't have him. But they didn't make the playoffs. So like, why does that argument even matter? Like you would be the you would be the 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 ninth best team as opposed to the thirteenth best team. But then you look at like I don't know. Ah, like, I mean, like, Patrick Mahomes won MVP last season. Like, if you take Patrick Mahomes off of that Chiefs team and, like, you put in their backup, whatever the hell, what's it, Henne, Chad Henne, like, they'd be much worse. Like, that's value because you're providing value to that team by making them play better and look better when you're on the field. But, like, if you take Brock Purdy off of the 49ers and you put in whoever their backup is, whether it was Sam Darnold, they'd probably be in a similar state to where they are because Sam Darnold is, a, is an NFL competent cute quarterback and he has the weapons around him. George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey. He has the line of Trent Williams, really good defense. Like that's, that's how value should be quantified. Like, like my MVP right now pains me to say it, but I think it's Dak Prescott because I think that he is maximizing the talent that, he, that is around him. You know, he has CD Lamb, one of the best wide receivers in the league. He has Brandon Cooks, you know, he has, he has Dalton Schultz, he has Troy Pollard. Like he, like those are good football players, but I don't even, who even is the Cowboys? Back up. Cowboys roster. Oh, God. I think it was the Dallas Cowboys website. That's disgusting. Who is their backup quarterback? Do, 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 da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Trey Lance. If you put Trey Lance in at quarterback, the Cowboys are not 10 and 3. But if you put Sam Donald in at quarterback instead of Brock Purdy, they're probably going to be, I don't know, 8 and 5, 9 and 4. Like, that's what value is. And if you take the Aaron Fox off the Kings, they are not as they they like. I think I think the Pacers would be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm grasping at straws here. But I think the Aaron Fox should be top ten in the Aaron, than the MVP voting. That's 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 what this boils down to. And obviously, it's still very early. I'm just being a frustrated Kings fan. You know, I am I am a Kings fan because of the Aaron Fox. Like he got me into the Kings. But like, I don't know. It's just frustrating. He hasn't gotten his flowers yet. He doesn't have the superstar whistle yet. Like Shea shot like a million free throws. He's had 18 free throws, and De'Aaron shot 11. Like, he's just not getting the superstar whistle. He's someone that drives to the basket very frequently, draws contact, but he's not getting the calls, and it's very frustrating. And Kings announcers and fans have expressed their uh, disinterest in that. Mike Brown has, has, has you know, and like De'Aaron Falk, you, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just very annoying that he's not getting the respect that he deserves. He, he, you know, all-NBA all third team last season, clutch player of the year. Best player on a on the third seed in the West. He's just not getting the respect yet. It's very frustrating. But yeah, Kings are playing really good basketball right now. Fourteen and nine. What are they? What's the? Uh... <laughs> they are fifth in the West. Fifth in the West. They're even with the the, the Lakers right now. And the Kings, they've only lost to Rockets, Pelicans, and Warriors. And Rockets, Pelicans, Warriors. Who else did we lose to? We had nine losses, but they've been like, and the Clippers. Yeah, like these losses. Oh god, they're so frustrating. That stupid game winner against the stupid fucking Warriors. Yeah, we've lost to the Clippers twice, the Pelicans twice, the Warriors twice, and the Rockets twice. Wait, and the Clippers, Pelicans, Clippers. Pelicans. Yeah, we lost the. I know we lost the Pelicans three times. Like we're not, and then we're beating these top. We 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 beat Minnesota. We beat uh, Los Angeles. We beat Oklahoma City. We beat. We're beating these top. The, these top. We beat Phoenix. Like you know, I think this that this. I said it. You know, in my in my uh, season preview, like I think this is one of the deeper teams in the West. I think they have. The the mindset and the coaching to be like I think we're gonna have more playoff success. Than we did last season. Like I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna be able to get out of that first round because you know a lot of that was just playoff jitters. You know, a team that hasn't made the playoffs in 16 seasons. You know, a lot of those guys for the first taste of the playoffs. Deion Fox, especially Keegan Murray, and all of our young guys. And like Kevin Herter's been in the playoffs. You know, Dylan Sabonis has been in the playoffs. But you know, as a team now, you know, Mike Brown's coached. You know, wor- like world champion teams. Like I don't know. I think this team is just more together and more put together than they were last season. I'm excited to see how the rest of the season goes. But yeah, I mean, overall, I just think that De'Aaron Fox needs more respect. It's kind of frustrating that he hasn't been getting it. Next up, Philadelphia Eagles. God damn, that game on Sunday, I wanted to shoot myself in the face. 
pardon my, you know, uh, that's not really language. It's just pardon my apathy. It was terrible. And it's just very frustrating because, like, we're 10 and 3. I'm a very spoiled Eagles fan. I've had We've had, uh, you know, two phenomenal seasons back-to-back, you know, NFC champions last year playing, you know, good football. We're 10 and 3, and I'm being very annoyed. Like, it's not the losses that are making me mad. It's how we're losing. Losing 33 to 13. Losing 42 to 19. Like, I don't know. It's just, it just stinks. And it's very frustrating to see. And this game on uh, Monday against Seattle is a big game. I think Brandon Graham said it best. I think, no, I mean, might have Fletcher Cox, but look, we're going to see who the dudes are in the locker room. Like, I know the, the message seems to be we, we got to look ourselves in the mirror and see, you know, we, we got to see who's coming to play. We got to see who's, who's built for the adversity. And Jalen Hurts, you know, he said, you know, there's no success without challenges, no success without adversity. And that's very true. Like, I said it last season when we lost to the Commanders. I said it against the Jets, and the whole locker room did. Like we lost to the Jets, and that, and then like so much success. Kind of, it's it, it's it's like the 2016 Warriors. Like they 73 and nine cruised through the West. You know they they came back three one against the Thunder, and then blew the three one lead the Cavaliers. Like you need to face some level of adversity to be prepared for when the biggest troubles happen. Like you need to get these minor troubles throughout the way. That way you're prepared mentally for when, oh shit, like this is this is a big this is a big problem. And losing to the Jets allowed us, you know, we went on that streak again. You know, we were we were five and five and oh, lost to the Jets. We racked up five more wins. I mean, we had a pretty good stretch. Like, you know. Let's see here. Let me pull it up again. Ugh. But, you know, you 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 gotta lose. Yeah, so look. Five straight wins. Lost to the Jets. Five straight wins, double losses. And we had that good stretch, you know, beat Miami. We beat Washington. We beat Dallas. We beat Kansas City. We beat the Bills. And then we lost to, the, you know, the Niners and the Cowboys. And, like, some people look at that gauntlet and say, oh, we lost two straight games, you know, by 20-plus points in each of them. But, like, that's still a successful stretch. And, like, t- football teams lose games. Like, the stupid 49 49- I hate the Niners so much, dude. They're my most hated team. No, that's not true. I hate, I hate them more than the – I don't hate them more than the Cowboys. But, like, let's see. No, 49ers. They like lost three straight games this year, didn't they? San Francisco. Ooh. Ugh. Yeah, they lost three straight games. They lost to the Browns, the Vikings, and the fucking Bengals. And then they, you know, racked up five, five straight wins. Like they, 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 they went five, three, five. Like teams lose. Like football teams lose. Like we lost to Washington last season, and I was like, oh shit, you know, we lost. We were eight and zero, but then you know. We pulled ourselves together. You know, Jalen Hurts went down, Gardner Minshew, you know, dropped back to back games. That sucked. We lost to what? New Orleans. We lost to Washington, New Orleans, and Dallas that season. And it's like, you know, that happens. And then we made the NFC Championship game. We made the Super Bowl. Like, you need adversity to succeed. Like, that's just how it is. And this, I would argue that this Seahawks game, like, at, 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 the, at the point of the Niners game coming up, that was the biggest game of the year. At the point of the Cowboys game coming up, that was the biggest game of the year. But now we've really gotten to a point where it's like, this is a must win game. And the Seahawks, they're not a bad football team at all. And I don't think we've beat – hold on. Stat, Muse, Eagles, record against Seahawks, last 15 seasons. We are 0-6 against the Seahawks since 2009. That's ridiculous, dude. Like, this is a big game. And, you know, history's against us in terms of, you know, arbitrary, like, history stats. But, like, we've gotten to a point where this is the biggest game of the season. And I'll probably, you know, that, that term will probably be thrown onto a bunch of other games for the rest of the year. But, like, this is truly, we're at a point where this is the biggest game. If we lose this game, it's looking bleak. Like, our best case scenario right now is losing out. Or winning out, Jesus. Knock on wood. Winning out. We have Seattle, New York, Arizona, New York. Very winnable schedule on paper. But we gotta do it. Like we, we we can't just chalk those up as wins because of records. The the Giants are playing good football. Tommy DeVito, Mr. Italian, is putting on a show in New York. The Cardinals, you know, Kyler Murray is back. Like they're like they're doing good things. Like you gotta, you know, these are these are four must win games. Like you gotta do your thing and win these last four games. Like this is the biggest game of the year. Like it's it, it's that like I, I I keep throwing that term around. Like you gotta win these games. Like you gotta win this game. You gotta. And I don't know what it looks like if we if we lose this game. We gotta win this game. It's the biggest game of the year, and I'm just I I I, I haven't enjoyed watching Eagles football over the last like what, 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 what uh, phew, Cowboys game was ass, 
Niners game was ass. The Bills game was honestly ass. We won that game, but that was painful. Like, it sucked. Like, I haven't enjoyed watching, like, the last, like, three and a half or, like, two and a half games of Eagles football. I want to enjoy watching this game. I turned the Cowboys game off after that Devontae Smith fumble in the red zone. Like, we got to play good football. We got to play our game. We got to play playing. Because, like, the whole story of this year is, like, we haven't been playing to the level that we're capable of. And that's been true. It's been we're not playing Eagles football. We're kind of just, like, we, we, we've, we've kind of lucked out for a lot of our wins. And, you know, that's just, that's just how football is any given Sunday. You know, that's a saying for a reason. But, like, it, it's true. And, you know, it's a must-win game. we got to win it. And it's just uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see. And, like, I'm, I'm spoiled. Like, sports aren't everything. Like, I'm not going to be like, no, <laughs> we're 10-4. and four. What the fuck? But it's, it's just going to suck because I'm, I'm, I'm a sports fan. I talk sports a lot. And it's just, it's, just, it's going to be embarrassing. Like, we've, we've kind of gotten embarrassed over these last two games. And we're better than that. Like, this team is better than that. Jalen Hurts is better than that. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, they probably had their worst games of their career last game. Like, it, it's embarrassing. It sucks to see. And we got to put on a show in Seattle. we got to win this game. Monday Night Football prime time. Let's fucking go. Go, Birds. Must win. we got to win out. we got to win out. That's all I'm going to say. Let's move on to some fun stuff. I'm going to do that ultimate Pokemon picker. Uh, favorite of each type from every region. Let's just go. Favorite normal type from Kanto. Snorlax favorite. Fire type from Kanto. Arcanine, probably. Water type from Kanto. This is tough. Probably Krabby. Grass type from Kanto. Probably Venusaur. Ultra type. It's probably Raichu. Ice type, probably Lapras. Ooh, no, Dugong. Fighting type is probably Polyrath. Favorite poison type is definitely Nido King. My slime. Favorite ground type, Dugtrio. Yeah, that feels good. Favorite flying type. Probably Dragonite. No. Favorite fly type is, Scyth- is Scyther. Favorite Psychic type is Slowbro. Favorite bug type, Beedrill. Favorite rock type, probably, uh, shoot, probably Rhydon. Rhydon these nuts. Favorite ghost type, Gengar. Favorite dragon type is Dragonite. Favorite dark type, there's no dark type. Favorite steel type, Magneton. Ooh, Magneton. Favorite fairy type, probably Wigglytuff. Favorite starter is definitely Blastoise. Favorite gimmick. Probably GMAX Snorlax. Favorite Legendary is Zapdos. Overall favorite Snorlax. Boom. Favorite normal type from Johto. It's probably Porygon 2. Favorite fire type from Johto. Ooh. Typhlosion probably. Favorite water type from Johto is Politoed. Grass type from Johto. Jumpluff. Electro type from Johto. Ooh. That's tough. Probably Flaffy. Ice type from Johto. Hey, Delibird, favorite fighting type, Hitmon top. Poison type is Crobat. Ground type, ooh, Gligar. Favorite flying type, ooh, let's go Ledian. Favorite psychic type, oh, damn, Espeon, yeah. Favorite bug type, Scythe or Scizor. Favorite rock type, probably Shuck. Favorite ghost type, probably only one mischievous, and then King only one. Favorite dark type, probably Murkrow. Favorite steel type is Fortress. Favorite fairy type, let's go Gramble. Gramble's cool. Favorite starter, probably for alligator. Yeah. Favorite gimmick, probably Mega Heracross. Favorite legendary is Raikou. Favorite overall is definitely Scizor. Hoenn. Favorite normal type from Hoenn. Just Hoenn around. Ooh, Spinda maybe. Fire type. Probably n- camera up. Water type. Damn. There's hella water types. Favorite water type from Hoenn. It's probably. Oh, Lord. Favorite grass type. Probably Breloom. Favorite electric type. Probably Manic Trick. Favorite ice type. Snow Runt. Favorite fighting type. Oh, shit. Just Blaziken. Favorite poison type, Swalot. Favorite drag uh, ground type, probably Clay Doll. Favorite flying type, probably Trophy uh, Pelipper. Favorite psychic type. Yeah, let's go Clay Doll for psychic, and let's go Flygon for ground. Yeah, yeah. Favorite bug type, probably Shedinja. Favorite rock type is Relicanth. Favorite ghost type, it's probably Clops. Favorite dragon type. Let's go Mints. Favorite Dark Types, Cacturn, my fucking guy. Favorite Steel Type, Registeel. Favorite Fairy Type, I don't know, Gardevoir. 
Favorite starters? Precept. Favorite gimmick form? Ooh. Let's go um, Mega Agron. He's, he's, he's silly. Favorite legendary is definitely Reggie Steel. Favorite overall? Probably Relicanth. <laughs> Favorite normal type from Sinnoh is Munchlax. Favorite fire type from Sinnoh is Rotom Heat. Favorite water type from Sinnoh? Ooh. Probably Gastrodon. Let's go East Sea. Favorite grass type is Torterra. Easily. Favorite electric type is probably Lux Ray. Favorite ice type, probably Lass. Frost Lass. Favorite fighting type is Infernip. Infernip. Favorite poison type, let's go uh, Toxicroak. I used that in Brilliant Diamond. That was cool. Favorite ground types, Hippowdon. Favorite flying type, probably Honchcrow. He's cool. Favorite psychic type, let's go Zong. Or no, let's go Azelf. Favorite bug type, <laughs> As far as Garupi. Favorite rock type. Let's go Probopass. Favorite ghost type. Probably Blim. Favorite dragon type. Let's go Dialga. Favorite dark type. Oh, shit. Wait, no. Let's go Honchcrow for dark. For flying, let's go... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gliscor. Favorite steel type. Magnazon. Favorite fairy type. Let's go Togekiss. Favorite starters. Torterra. Favorite gimmick. Uh, uh, regular Lucario, favorite legendary, uh, uh, probably Dialga. Favorite overall is Tortura. So no, favorite uh, normal types, Stout. Favorite fire types, Boar. Favorite water type, let's go Rot or Duot. No, no. Let's go Ducklip. Favorite grass type, Maractus. Favorite electric type, Galvantula. Favorite ice type. Vanillux, favorite fighting type. Scrafty, favorite poison type. Scolipede, favorite ground type. Crocodile, favorite flying type. Favorite flying type. Mmm. Let's go Archeops. Favorite psychic type. Reuniclus, favorite bug type. Crustle, right? Yeah, Crustle. Favorite rock type. Jigglyth, or yeah, j Jiggle, Jiggle. Favorite ghost type. This is tough. Let's go. Let's go. Go lurk. Favorite dragon type. Damn. Let's go fracture. Ah, uh, yeah. Favorite dark. Favorite dork type. Oh shit! Hold on. Oh no! Hold on. Dark type is crocodile. Ghost type Chandelure. No. Go for Grigus. And then we could do ground type. We could do go lurk. Yeah. Favorite steel type. Let's go um, Ferrothorn. Fairy, what's it called? Starter, Embor. Let's go Tepig. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite gimmick. I don't know. G Max. No. Uh, go Boater. Favorite legendary. <laughs> Damn, this is tough. No, it's not really Zach Ron. Favorite overall. Ooh, Crocodile. All right, Kalos. Favorite normal type from Kalos. Ooh, this is tough. Ooh, this is tough. Let's go Bunnelby. Favorite fire type from Kalos. God, Kalos is so ass, dude. I don't know. Talonflame, I guess. Favorite water type. Clawitzer. Grass type. Ch chestnut. Electric type, electric type, heliotile, ice type, avalug, dark type, or fighting type, I don't know, panchum, panchum, poison type, let's go scrub, scrub's cool, ground type, let's go side guard, flying type, why do they put the megas in here, that's so fucking annoying, noibat, psychic type, meow stick, male, sorry female, no, no, I'm going male. For a bug type. I don't know, Spupa's kind of cool. I'm not choosing the Megas for these. That's stupid as fuck. Favorite rock type, Tyrantrum. Favorite gust type. Favorite gust type, probably Aegislash. Favorite dragon type, dragon these, uh, these, um, I don't know. Let's go Gudra. Dark, dark, dark type, Greninja. Steel, steel, steel type, Klefki. Fairy type, ooh, Slurpuff. Starters. Probably chestpin. Mm, gimmick form. Oh my god, dude. What the hell? Megas are 
meh. Not a lot of Megas really speak to me. But let's go. My favorite Gen 6 Mega. It's probably Mega Slowbro because it's hilarious. Favorite Legendary. Ugh. Ugh. Um. I don't know. Is that a guard 100 for him? No, let's go to the dog. Favorite overall is probably Slurpuff. Gen 7. Two cannons, my favorite fly. Or normal, no, 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 my favorite normal type is Stuffle. Favorite fire type is. Salazzle. Favorite water type. Type is. Arequinid. Arequinid. Favorite grass type is. Del Mise. Favorite electric type is probably Vicavolt. Favorite ice type is definitely. Elolin Sandshrew. Favorite fighting types, probably Piss Imian. Piss, Piss Imian. Favorite poison types, probably uh, Toxapex. Favorite ground type, my boy Palisand. Favorite flying type, Tukinen. Favorite psychic type is, uh, freaking, uh, la 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 li 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 li. Let's go to Ranguru. Favorite bug type, favorite b b bug type is Araquanid. Favorite rock type, let's go dusk form lichen rock. Favorite ghost type, Go, oh no, let's go Delmise for Ghost, and for Grass we can go Shenotic. Shenotic's cool. Favorite Dragon type. <sighs> let's go Drampa, he's funny. Favorite uh, the Dark type is uh, Lolan Muck. Favorite Steel type is uh, Lolan Duck Trio. Favorite Fairy type is Rabombi. Favorite Starter. Let's go Incineroar, I suppose. Favorite Gimmick form is. Alolan Raichu. Favorite legendary is probably Tapu Lele, I think. Yeah, Tapu Lele. Favorite overall is Palisand. All right, Gen 8. Okay, favorite normal type from Gen 8 is Double. Favorite fire type from Gen 8 is Scorch. Ooh, yeah, Scentiscorch. Favorite water type from Gen 8 is Dracovish. Favorite grass type from Gen 8 is Appleton. Yeah. Electric type Gen 8. Let's go Arctazolt or Dracozolt. Favorite Ice type from Gen 8 is Ice Q. Yes, Ice Q. Favorite Fighting type from Gen 8 is probably Zugalarian Zapdos. He's cool. Favorite Poison type from Gen 8 is Low Key Form Ta Toxtricity. Favorite Ground type from Gen 8 is probably Ursaluna. I love Ursaluna. Favorite Flying type from Gen 8 is <laughs> probably, uh, I don't know, Cramorant. He's silly. Favorite Psychic type from Gen 8. Let's go Orbeetle. Yeah, Orbeetle. Favorite Bug type from Gen 8. Let's go... I don't know, Sizzlepeed. I like that line a lot. Favorite Rock type from Gen 8 is probably Colossal. Favorite uh, d -d -d Ghost type from Gen 8. Let's go a low or Pesuian Typhlosion. Yeah, favorite uh, Dragon type from Gen 8. This one I'll do Aplin. Yeah, I love that line so much. Favorite Dark type from Gen 8. Ooh, let's go with the Suian Samurott. Favorite Steel type from Gen 8. Let's go Berserker. How are we feeling yet? Berserker. Favorite Fire type from Gen 8. Let's go by uh, Grimmsnarl. Favorite Starter from Gen 8 is definitely Grookey. Hee hee hee, Grookey. Oh, God, there's so many gimmicks. Uh, favorite Gimmick from Gen 8 is probably the Suian Electro. I don't know. Favorite Legends, Reggie Lecky. My favorite from Gen 8. Oh, shit. What's my favorite from Gen 8? Probably Appleton. Gen 9. All right. Favorite normal type from Gen 9. Let's do... um Shit. Favorite normal type from Gen 9 is... Smoliv, I guess. Favorite fire type from Gen 9 is Skeledurge. Favorite water type from Gen 9 is... 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 Iron Bundle. Favorite grass type from Gen 9 is... Maybe Diplin. Yeah. Yeah, it's Diplin. Electrotype is... What is this thing called? I forget. Tad Tadbulb. Ice type from Gen 9. Let's go uh, Bax Caliber. Fighting type from Gen 9. Let's go Flamigo. No, let's go Iron Hands. Poison type from Gen 9. Let's go Clodzire. Ground type from Gen 9. Let's go freaking uh, Iron Treads. Yeah. Flying type from Gen 9. Ooh. You know what? We're going to Flamigo here for fighting. We're going to do 
Oh shit, they're not a lot of good fighting types. No, wait. No, no, Flamigo's for fighting. Bug Gen 9 is def no, this is psychic. Psychic from Gen 9 is um Ravska. Bug is spied off my goat. Rock is probably Iron Thorns. Yeah, Iron Thorns is cool. Favorite ghost type from Gen 9 is probably Shit. Let's go Skeletor here and for fighting type or for fire type we can do um Chi the 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 fish. Here, dragon type from Gen Nine is probably um, uh, the the ancient Raikou because I think it's hilarious. Here, dark type from Gen Nine is probably um 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 the saber tooth tiger thing. Favorite steel type from Gen Nine is probably um um uh, I don't know Tinkerton. Favorite fairy type from Gen Nine is definitely Dodge Bund. Favorite starter from Gen 9 is my guy. Oh, let's we'll, we'll choose for Coco. Yeah, 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 Ooh, this is tough. Probably Embor. Favorite overall water type? Ooh. Probably Ducklet. Overall grass type? Tortura. Favorite overall electric type? Is definitely Raichu. Or no, it's Galvantula. Overall ice type is Snorunt. Favorite overall fighting type? Ooh, probably Polyrath. Overall poison type is definitely Nido King. Favorite all overall ground type is Pelissand. Favorite all flying type? Ooh, it's probably Two Cannon. Yeah, hold on. No, it's Gligar. <laughs> Favorite all psychic type? Claydol, probably. Favorite all bug type scissor. Favorite overall rock type is uh relicanth. Favorite all overall fed uh, ghost type is uh la 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 Applin, I guess. Favorite overall dark type, crocodile. Favorite overall steel type, probably red steel. Favorite overall fairy type, Slurpuff. Favorite overall starter, Turtwig. Favorite overall gimmick, G Max Snorlax. Favorite overall legendary, probably Zapdos. Favorite overall Pokemon is Snorlax. All right, that's enough. That was cool. All right, let's do let's do a uh, the, the Poke Doku. We gotta wrap this episode up. Fire dark type, uh, Incineroar. Fire Psychic type. Del Fox. Favorite overall fire normal type. Pyroar. Favorite overall dark grass type. Cacturn. This isn't like, why am I saying favorite overall? Grass psychic type. Celebi. Favorite overall grass normal type. I think exist oh small of. Dark Paldea. Um 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 um. Mastiff. Booyah. Psychic type, Rabska. Booyah. Normal type from Paldea. Um, 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 um. Oink alone. Boom. Uh, let's do New York Times games and then we can wrap this up. Connections. This is really long. This caffeine's giving me the boost I need. Okay, we got Shark, Motto, Crab, Seal, Duck, Quack. Flag, crank, crook, stoop, grump, anthem, crouch, grouch, cheat squat. So I think grouch, grump, um, crank, grumpy, grumpy, cranky, grouchy, um, crabby, right? Nailed it. Curmudgeon, yeah. Duck, quack, flag. Okay, wait. Flag, seal. Wait. Motto, anthem, seal. Ooh. Flag? Boom. National symbol. Okay. Crook. Okay, hold on. Shark? Wait, no. Duck, squat. Boom. Crouch, stoop, duck, squat. 
Nailed it. Oh, we're cooking quack, shark, cheat, crook, curmudgeon, national summons, get low, and swindler. I'm the best, dude. Let's do the mini. Let's do the fucking mini. Scrollable part of social media. Feed. Little bit of snow. Flurry. Detective Black. Okay, I don't know. First clothing to put on in- informally. First clothing to put on formally. What the hell? Big name in headphones. Bose. They might be mutual for bankers. Uh, Ernie has a rubber ducky. A rubber ducky. Lake bordering buffalo. Eerie. Hair colors. Dyes. Actor uh, flub. Former late night host Jay Leno. Okay, hold on. Oh, undies. And then, um, oh my God, 44 seconds. Did I just play a song? Did you hear that? All right. That's enough of this episode. Wow. Ramble filled, as always, but you got to love it. This has been Talks with Vlogs, episode eight. I'll catch you guys next week. I might have a guest. That's cool. But yeah, peace out. Love you guys. Bye, bye, bye. Peace out, peace out, peace out. Peace out.